Hello and welcome to the final race of the 2013 Utica Home Track Series season here at Myrtle Beach. We have quite the race here today and quite the championship battle. At the front, only four points separate our leader with second place. Brian Valentine has 547 points going into this race weekend. William Duncan just four points back. And we also have four other drivers that can win this championship. There is Matt Evans and Brock McMahon tied at 527. It's going to be a little bit of a stretch for them, but it's possible for them to get it done. And then we got the two long shots, Dom Caps and Jeffrey Finguy, 517 and 515 respectively. Those are the last two drivers that have a chance to win, but it's going to be pretty difficult for them. Bob Cedino is the cutoff point. He could, at the very most, tie the points leader. But the conditions are pretty stiff for that, and he would lose the tiebreaker no matter what, as he lacks the victories. We're going to take a look now at the battle for 35th in points. That's between two drivers, Bob Cortez and Joseph Bryant. It's 17 points difference, but Bob Cortez is not in the race. So if Joseph Bryant can finish 17 positions ahead of last place, he will be locked into the top 35. He will not have to worry about Bristol next season. And lastly for point standings, we're going to take a look at the Rookie of the Year standings. That is car number 83, William Duncan, on top, 260 points. Dom Caps is in second at 249. It's close, 11 points of difference. And then we got Julian Cannabis Jr., who's 236, a little further back. But he had the shot today as he is in the race. But now, we are going to take a look at the starting grid. For your final race here at Myrtle Breach, we're going to start from the back of the field and go to the front. In the final row, car number 79, Prudence Little John, the dirt track ace, is all by herself in 37th place. In the next row, we've got Justin Benoit to the outside of championship competitor Matt Evans. Evans is the winner of this race before, but he's also the lowest starting of the championship competitors. Let's hope he doesn't get caught up in any wrecks. Then, we have Jonathan Bentons and Devin Whitson. Devin Whitson making his debut start, so he's trying to make an impact in the series. Jonathan Benton's the only Aurelio car in the field. In 32nd, we've got Sam Young, car number 37. And to his inside it is defending champion Jamie Murphy. Not going to be able to win it this year, so she's just going to have to try and win the race. In 30th, we've got Cameron Diamond in car number 69S. And to the inside, it's championship contender and points leader Brian Valentine the 2011 champion. 28th, we've got Alex Tanker, and to the inside is his teammate, Brock McMahon, and car number 44, the championship competitor. All of the Tanker Motorsports cars starting very close in proximity. 26th, we've got Josh LaMeo, car number 06 for Gas State Engineering Incorporated. He won this spot by doing the best overall in a three-race average at the beginning of the season. And to his inside, it's Joseph Bryant, car number 80, who's battling to stay in the top 35. Then we have 24th, Connor Germain, the Frenchman. And to his inside is Andreas Allen in the number 08, Lindsey Sterling Dodge. 22nd, we've got Trek Togger in car number 60. And to the inside is a debut driver, Derek Bonassi, car number 53. Let's see how he can do today. In 20th, we have Andrew Robinson, the rookie in the number 43, the winner at Silverstone. And Spencer Germer, who is making his debut start for Bartel Racing. In 18th, we've got Tyler Young making his debut, the third of the Young family. And Jeffrey Thinguy, the championship competitor, is going to have a decent starting spot in 17th. 16th is Inga Lambuliana making her debut for the Piet Motorsports team. And Tom Girard for Kyle Thomas' team also making his debut. Then in 14th, we've got Bob Sedino, the 04. He won the qualifier event to get here, the Heat Race, but unable to win this championship. And to the inside, Jude Piet, car number 95 the second of the two Piet Motorsports cars in the field. In 12th, we've got Austin LaPlan making his debut start, and to the inside, the Rainbow Road racing car of Nicholas Guerra, car number six, making it in by an inch. Rounding out the top 10, it is Dom Caps, the championship competitor, and to the inside is Pichu London making his debut, a uh, common face in many series. In 8th, we've got Chris Washer, the driver of the double zero, has wrecked both his primary and his backup car, they are borrowing a car from Neil Evans and Evans Engineering Incorporated to run the remainder of this race. And to the inside is Colin Bartell in the number 99 machine. He was the former Megville winner. 
In sixth place, it's William Duncan, the highest qualifying of the championship competitors, and he likes being this far ahead of Brian Valentine. And to his insides, the Jeffrey Finn Guy Incorporated machine of Julian Kennebled Jr., who's trying to go for Rookie of the Year honors. In fourth, we've got Amanda Pericles, driving for Rising Motorsports, the only Pericles in the field. And to the outside, sorry, the inside, it's Makoto Iguchi, driving for uh, the number 42 machine. Great start for her debut. She's the highest qualifying of the debut starters. And on the front row, it's Brian Benoit, car number 75, an unexpected run to the front. And Nikki Allen's going to get the pole. This is her first career pole in the Uticom Track Series. And this was her debut start last year, so she's hoping to make a great impact. And that is your starting grid for the 2013 Myrtle Beach event. Let's get to the track. As mentioned, Nikki Allen got the pole for today's event here at Myrtle Beach. To the outside is Brian Benoit as we head. 200 laps are underway here at Myrtle Beach as Nikki Allen is going to pass underneath the 75 Chevy in the first turn. It's going to keep that race lead. Makoto Iguchi trying to pass on the inside as well for the second place position. Now, Makoto Iguchi would eventually get that position as we meet the spotlighter here as a very impressive qualifying effort by the Super 42 machine. Now, this car was originally a Brian Broke car from a couple years ago back during the 2011 and 12 seasons. Now this car has gone to victory lane at Zandvoort, but let's see if uh, Makoto Iguchi can pilot this car to success here today at Myrtle Beach, having a great run and what may be a fresh new face to the sport. We had our first caution on lap number five, and there would be many of them. This track is called the Car Grinder. But here we go, Amanda Pericles is gonna get loose off the front. Julian Kennebler Jr. just come down. William Duncan, a championship competitor, is gonna get involved as well, but it looks like he's not gonna get too much damage out of the ordeal. And this was not all, as there is more stacking up even further back. And you see, look at all these cars. They're just going to plow into the wall here. Something went horribly wrong in turn four on lap five. There's a lot of cars spun out and damaged already in this race. We had an incident. One lap later, Nikki Allen is your race leader. Is going to pull down and plow. Jonathan Benton, the race leader, has just wrecked five laps into the race. And that car would have to go to pit road. They would keep it in the race, but uh, not looking good for the 09 machine. Brian Benoit would overtake the race lead, but something weird is going to happen on the start. They're going to have a mechanical issue. That car is just going to catastrophically fail and plow into the inside wall. They stall. They would bring him to the garage area and try and get him back out on track. What a disappointment. As Pichu London would head into the race lead, Makoto Iguchi went down pit road to repair some damage. Um, Pichu London, a uh, familiar face throughout many series. Um, and what is it? We have some contact below them. And contact! The leader has been wrecked again. Brock McMahon, championship competitor. Jonathan Benton's the number 92 who survived last time. And many more are piling in. Going into turn four. Oh man, what... What had happened there? Um, Brock McMahon and Jonathan Benton just got shot down to the inside. Let's see what happened. Caution two, lap 11. Brad McMahon, I don't know what he was thinking here. He just decides to turn Jonathan Benton. Just going to set him off track and just going to collect the entire field. So, a lot of drivers here not happy with Jonathan Benton. But, I mean, uh, Brad McMahon, as no one knows where his mindset is. As we take a look at the uh, roof cam here just so we see what he saw. But uh, new leader would be Colin Bartell, car number 99. Now, uh, Colin Bartel is the Megville winner. Um, was a favorite for the championship earlier in the season, but things really tapered off. And as you see, Prudence Littlejohn going to head down Pear Road. That's going to slow up the field, and he's going to get a pretty hefty lead. But we know that won't stay long as cautions happen like wildfire over here. We had another one, as you can see by that flag, on lap 16. Inga Lombliana making her first start, going to get turned by the Frenchman. Connor Germain, and that's going to take Tyler Young and Austin LaPlante to the wall as well. We see a couple other cars around. I believe Chris Washer got a piece of it, along with several others. Inga Lombliana hoping to uh, make a name for herself here today in this borrowed Jack Smith number 87. Interesting thing under caution, Colin Bartell tried to avoid Jonathan Benton's, is going to get by him, but then Makoto Iguchi is going to pass him under caution and lead the lap. However, the officials say that she needed to give the spot back. They won't give her the point for leading the lap. Colin Bartell stage your leader. Caution for lap 21. This happened right on the restart. Brock McMahon yet again 
He's going to make contact with Derek Benassi. He's going to collect Cameron Diamond. There's Sam Young riding the wall and going over. And you see tons of cars piling. Ingle Ambliana, Chris Washer, Jeffrey Finguy, Tom Girard. On board with Sam Young. See what he saw as he went over. So it was just going to be a simple wall ride, but that car just cascaded over on its roof. And we got to make a spotlight as we head back to the restart. William Duncan, car number 83, with a lap down a couple laps ago, and he's going to make his way up to fifth. But just before we can do that, look at all this action. Oh! Huge pile up on track. And wait a second. William Duncan has just passed all four of the cars ahead of him, and now William Duncan goes from fifth to first in one turn. So now William Duncan leading the race and working his way toward the championship run. Let's see what happened here. Caution 5 left 27. Now, uh, Colin Bartell on the start got bumped by Brock McMahon, who's just not making any friends out here today. It looks like a wreck happened early on, but we're just seeing what happened to our race leaders. He gets forced down in the pit road by Alex Tanker, and whoa! Bartell's gonna flip the car over. You see, look at all these cars just piled in on pit road. So what happened was all four of the leaders just got held up by that wreck. William Jung was able to pass by. You see, they're still wrecking. Derek Benassi and Spencer Germer wreck as well. Let's see what actually happened here. Sam Young got turned by Ingle Ambuliana. And whoa, whoa, our flagman almost got clobbered there. But you see, look at all these cars. You've got practically ten wide. But uh, William Jung would not keep that lead long. As he would head down pit road, the competitor and the driver he was trying to beat, Brian Valentine, would take the race lead, and he would lead some laps. He needs the bonus points to try and make sure he stays ahead in the championship hunt. So you can see three wide racing. Oh, this could be dodgy. Three wide is never good. As Trick Tugger and Brian Benoit, who's gotten back on the track, Val, they're going to keep it safe, though. We take a look back at Joseph Bryan, who sits in third place. Now, they were worried if he was going to be able to beat Co um, Bob Cortez or not for uh, the top 35 points. This looks pretty solid as... Uh, he sits in third place, and I think we may have a caution out on the racetrack. Um, well, Brian Benoit spun, but uh, we're going to report that was not what the caution was for. He just spun out afterward. Um, lap 32 with this caution, caution number 6. Let's see, it looks like uh, Nikki Allen just not going to give uh, Makoto Gucci any room. Makoto Iguchi just going to wreck the number 09 machine. I see a budding rivalry here. Now you can see Sam Young, Ingle Ambliana, and Rob McMahon pile in. They've been the major players in every caution today. So, uh, if you were near them, I would watch out. Um, we spotlight Dom Caps, car number 24. He's currently running up there as one of the higher of the Chase competitors, sitting up in a decent spot, about uh, fifth place. Now, Dom Caps is uh, a long shot to win this title, but uh, he's really trying hard to make... Oh, we got some contact behind him. Amanda Pericles, Trek Togger, and others. Let's take a look at a replay. See what happened. This was Caution 7, lap 37. We're not even a... Uh, Fourth of the way through, we're already at seven cautions. What this track does, but uh, uh, Spencer Germer is going to turn. Trek Togger is going to involve man the Pericles, and the rest of the field is just going to pile in with nowhere to go. See cars littering the entire racetrack. There's Austin LaPlante trying to work his way back on the course. Pichu London not looking too damaged though. It looks like he was able to weave through it. Brian Valentine pits to repair a cut tire. And Andrew Robinson goes for the race lead. Now the number 43 machine hoping for a good run today. Make sure that secures some sponsorship for next year, maybe. The Silverstone winner won as a surprise that time. Maybe he can make some more surprises today as he sits near the front of the pack. One of those drivers that no one was really expecting to make the show. They saw some more top tier. Well, we got some uh, more contact right behind them. Caution 8, lap 45. Devin Whitson, car number 29, is going to get turned by the championship contender, William Duncan. I'm not sure if that was either uh, William Duncan did that purposely or uh, Devin Whitson was just kind of in the way in that higher Chevy. And whoa! Almost hit into the pit wall. Prince Liljohn, let's go on board with her. Almost got pinned down in the pit road. Last minute decision to get on track and just barely made it through. That's why she's an expert with the wheel on these kind of tracks, short tracks and dirt tracks. Um, the leader... Following that caution would be Jamie Murphy, car number 20. Now, that doesn't look like a car that would normally be leading a race, but at a track like this, you would kind of expect that. If you see Brian Valentine actually went a lap down due to that cut tire, we'll have to see what happens. We have a ninth caution on lap 50. 
Makoto Iguchi is going to try and split Derek Benassi and Brian Benoit. Not going to work. They're going to get into the wall. He's going to come down to Austin LaPlante. He's going to click a couple other drivers, including Brian McMahon, one of the championship contenders. You see more cars piling in. There's Judith Piat, Colin Bartel, William Duncan. Matt Adams is going to get slowed, but uh, we'll take no damage from this. Oh, now he does. As Brian Valentine, we go back into the race lead, having a great race so far and getting a run on the pack here. This could be his night for a championship. As we look at our 10th caution on lap 55, Bob Sedino is going to try and make a move under uh, Pichu London, going to get in with him after being kind of with Jerry Panassi. Joseph Bryant is going to get a piece of this, and he's going to go around, and Juice Piet's going to get a piece too, and he's going to go for several hits. I'm not sure if there's something between Bryant and Piet, as, Piet, as uh, Bryant is known for making enemies. Instant lap 56. Brian Valentine is going to plow right into Nicholas Guerra. And he would have to go to pit road. He would give up the lead and go many laps down. A tragedy for Brian Valentine. This could hurt his chase chances. You just have to hope that William Duncan doesn't do as well. So he's going to go to pit road. Jamie Murphy in the number 28. Main and tail of Ford is going to go back to the race lead and uh, pace around this track. He's been having a great run today and looking at a good finish if all goes accordingly. Caution 11 on lap 62. Prudence Littlejohn is going to make contact with Andrew Robinson and Alex Tanker. Tanker goes around as well. Oh man, we got a bunch of cars stacking up here. I see Ingle Ambliana, Justin Benoit, Bob Sedino is going to turn the car over. There's Devin Whitson involved as well. Andrew Andrea Towns is going to make it through it all right. And whoa! Cars in the air! The pace car! <laughs> It's going to go through. The pace car has always been a trouble at Myrtle Beach. It's going to be in trouble once again. As you see cars barreled over. Here's a stagnant camera of this. Uh, and so as you see, the car is just going to block the entire racetrack. Nowhere to go. The pace car driver is told before the race that he's supposed to go his course. He's not supposed to stop. And this is what happens. Cars flipped over. A couple cars are going to go out of the race. Amanda Pericles and Ingo Lambuliana are going to not be able to finish it on board with Makoto Iguchi, who went for quite a ride. He was right here, right behind Joseph Bryant. See, they're all nudged up against the wall here, and just completely trapped. No other go. He's going to see some content a little bit. Oh, he's going to get shoved right into the back of uh, Joseph Bryant's machine, and that car's going to go over. Keep it in the race, but uh, that car is horribly bruised and beaten. Dom Cap, car number 24, back to the race lead. This has currently been a career run for him. He's been up in the top five most of the season, but never has he been this close competition for the victory as he's battling with a couple other drivers. On him as Joseph Bryan trying to make a pass, get a lap back. And we had another caution, uh, lap 67. Justin Benoit, car number 22, going to get sent right up in front of Brian Valentine. More cars going to get collected. There's uh, Nicky Oh, whoa, another car goes over. That's championship competitor Matt Evans who's going for the second year in a row trying to go for this championship. So close last year. Oh, he's going to get turned over. He's not like that, but back on his roof again. As you see, a lot of cars. Almost goes over a second time. He's getting rammed by what looks like Rob McMahon, and uh, I think we got a report Austin LaPlante tried to ram over, too. Not sure uh, if maybe McMahon is trying to eliminate some of the competition, but another incident on lap 68. We saw this as they were going to the line there. John Cap is going to get sent up into the wall by a William Duncan. He's going to ride the wall a little bit going through turns three and four, but uh, William Duncan trying to take care of championship competitor. Chris Washer is going to get a piece of it as well. So uh, I think Cap's unleashing his frustration on the wrong driver. Caution 13, lap 72. Now uh, these cars were slow going to the start here. Sam Young just completely stopped Austin LaPlante said I had enough of this and just turned him around. He stalled in the middle of the racetrack and uh, was unable to get going. So uh, another caution came out for that. You see drivers just trying to make it by. And uh, Tom Gerard's going to spin himself out too trying to make it pass. They went to green but immediately went to yellow flag. If Josh LaMail would take the green flag the next time out, a couple cars pitted under caution. So uh, good job for uh, Josh Lameo getting his gas engineering incorporated car up into the lead pack. Now it's uncertain if he's going to return for next season. He's been kind of dropping out of the racing public eye. Came back to this race since he uh, won the opportunity to be here early in the year uh, with a couple of good finishes for him. He's a former winner. He won Sonoma in 2011. Caution 14, lap 76. 
Brian Valentine's going to get a huge contact with the wall with Trek Togger and Tyler Young. That car is going to go spiraling airborne, keeping the race. But uh, Brian Valentine was heavily upset with Trek Togger as uh, we head to another caution on lap 81. William Duncan going to get clipped by Cameron Diamond, going to go up into Jamie Murphy. Um, Bartell gets a piece of it, so will Alex Tanker. More cars piling in and around it. And uh, William Duncan not happy, so going to see a lot of cross words um, coming out of this event. And there's our uh, pace car. I see a couple of drivers back there uh, running into a little trouble, but caution on lap 87 as well. Sam Young has been around every caution, every race, I mean, uh, every caution all race long. It's going to get into Brian Valentine. Valentine even more furious that this driver, Sam Young, not going for anything. He's so far off the lead lap, is wrecking a championship competitor, getting in his way. And look at that, it's going to send him into the wall again and again. Valentine trying to make sure this car dies for good. As uh, the officials might have a word with Sam Young at the end of the race, they're not happy with... In fact, they may have a word with the entire Young family. The two Young brothers in this race have just been in caution after caution. Speaking of cautions, lap 93, Bruins Lil John tries to go to pit road. It's going to miss it, going too fast, going to clip Chris Washer, and they're both going to go into the wall. Two short track uh, drivers uh, by trade, working their way around the track. And Brian Valentine involved again. Ah, uh, man, I can't play you that radio footage. Incident lap 95, Colin Bartell. Driving along his merry way, brake failure is going to run into the pace car. He would go out of the race, similar to a Gabe Carasio, uh, end to a terrible season. Lap 98, we had caution number 18. There is William Duncan going to try and wreck championship competitor Jeffrey Finguy. I'm not sure why. He's not even close. Could have been a racing accident, but Finguy obviously didn't take it that way uh, based on his radio chatter. Andreas Allen involved as well, who's been keeping pretty quiet today. Brian McMahon also involved. Tom Gerard uh, tried to try and go through the 83 machine. And Cameron Diamond spun out as well. At lap 100, at the midway point of the event, this is where all the drivers are currently running. Dom Caps is currently in 4th place. William Duncan, 11th. Brian Valentine, 17th. Brian McMahon, 20th. Matt Evans, 22nd. Jeffrey Finguy, 27th. If the race were to end right now, it would be William Duncan, your champion. Unless uh, Brian Valentine can gain a couple more spots. It's pretty close because they both have led laps today. Now we take a look at the pace car right now. And this was an incident on lap 102. A bunch of slow cars in the way. Pace car is uh, trying to make sure these uh, lollygaggers uh, don't clog up the racetrack. Pushing them out of the way as he goes to pit road. And whoa! Um, Nicholas Garrick is going to get caught in between it. That car was not hand running properly anyway. That car will go out of the race. A shame for Nicholas Garrick, who is really looking forward to this race weekend. Caution out on lap 103. Another clogged starting grade. A lot of trouble uh, getting these drivers organized on track. Connor Germain is going to get sent up into the wall in front of Jamie Murphy and Trek Togger. It looks like Tyler Young also got turned around a little bit, too. You see all these drive pilots, and there's some of the race leaders trying to get through. And uh, Kyra Germain just going to get bombarded by everyone as uh, he gets back on track. we uh going to spotlight a driver, which we haven't had much time to do. Derek Benassi, car number 53, having a great run today, sitting in ninth place in his debut. So uh, congratulations to the uh, underfunded operation here. Coming to the track for their first ever start, making it through the qual. Oh no, um, they're calling him down pit road. Looks like they've got an uh, issue with a tire. Well, he was ninth for a little bit. Um, at least he um, can say he was performing well. Caution 20 lap 109. Tyler Young yet again. This time it's uh, gonna be not his fault as uh, Brian Benoit just gonna plow right hard into the number nine machine. Uh, Benoit got a hard hit. We're gonna take an onboard with him, see what it was like. Look at this, he gets clipped by the 7 machine of uh, Pichulet. Bam! Right into that pit wall. Right up into traffic. And Andreas Allen, I gotta give him props. He's been avoiding a lot of this mayhem today. At least getting uh, less of it than you would expect. As we saw him sneak by. <laughs> Look at uh, Connor Germain threading the needle between him and the wall. Um, Drew Pierre would actually lead one lap under caution while on pit road. But it would not stay for long as Dom Capps would go back to the race lead. She is in second, having a great run for her second career start. 
so a uh, great run for her. John Cap still pacing the field. Caution 21, lap 115. Josh LeMayo is going to be running very aggressively with Andrew Robinson. Pulls down to the bottom there. And it uh, looks like uh, he's still going at the moment, but uh, this car is having some trouble, it would look like. It's uh, really shaky, um, losing some uh, grip. He's complaining over the rail about it. And eventually just going to spin on him. He's going to go into the wall. Hard contact for the number 06 machine. Having a rough race at the moment. But uh, doing fairly well throughout most of the day. So uh, hopefully nothing bad happens to him in the future. Brian Valentine's been on pit road for a while. All those wrecks he's been involved in have taken their toll on the car. He's falling many laps down and William Duncan is running away from him. At the current moment, Dom Capps. Still your race leader, uh, trade, a little, trade a little bit under uh, caution, but uh, Dom Capps back there. Oh, whoa, it's some trouble. Tom Girard and Josh LeMayo right behind him. And that will be, oh, it looks like it was only an incident. Caution did not come out for this, which I'm surprised. Uh, Tom Girard is going to get way into uh, Josh LeMayo's space to keep it going. In fact, Josh LeMayo did not lose any position. And Tom Gerard's gonna get the get the butt of that as he heads to pit road to fix the damage. That car has been having a rough day. Caution 22 lap 122. This happened shortly afterward. Chris Washer gonna make contact with Brock Mass. He checks up. Trek Togger gonna get a piece of it as well. Matt Evans slowing down by it. And uh, Chris Washer getting back on track. Uh, Washer driving the car that Matt Evans' father owns. Incident lap 123. Jeffrey Finn guy coming to the line. Looks like uh, Tyler Young's going to get around. He's going to make some contact. And he's going to spout. Oh, Jamie Murphy going to get involved as well. And Pichu London going to run into him. I'm not sure if London and uh, Finn guy had a little bit of a uh, run in before. Matt Evans uh, is stuck there. And look at that. The uh, the race leader, Dom Capps, going to slide it through the turn, but it's going to keep it going. Caution 23 lap 130. Another example of slow cars trying to work their way to the start of the event. And it's going to be Alex Tanker, that uh, pink machine, is going to end up uh, getting turned around. More drivers uh, spinning out despite the slow speed. Uh, a lot of cars checking up and getting into each other, turning each other around, trying to weave their way through. They would call off the green flag yet another lap. But we had another caution on lap one, uh, lap 135. Bob said, you know, running underneath. Uh, Alex Tanker gets into the back of Brian Valentine. Just came off pit road. He's going to spin a lot of cars. Valentine even more unhappy. Brian Benoit involved. Trek Togger. Bob Sadino goes for a ride. And William Dunk is going to help him along. Trek Togger some hard, having some really hard contact all day long. Uh, Brian, oh, Brian Benoit's going to try and help him out. The pace car comes in. He's going to send Matt Evans over. Tom Gerard and uh, Andrew Rubson. We're going to have to take some onboards here. First, we're going to look at uh, the ride that uh, Bob Sadino took. To, uh, that initially started the, the flip. You see, he's just going to get bombarded by Trek Togger. Gets propped up a bit by Derek Benassi. Then uh, it's going to be um, out of focus for a while. Gets uh, helped a little bit by uh, Brian Benoit. Base car actually gets him back on his wheels and uh, he's going to keep the uh, car going. <laughs> so uh, having an uh, interesting ride. One more, uh, Matt Evans, who the championship that, whoa, just gets. Look at that, and we did lose that camera throughout the entire journey, so uh, good job uh, that the camera was not that, so it didn't get knocked out. Caution, 25, lap 140 out of 200. Brian McMahon just going to turn down the Dom Caps trying to wreck him. Uh, I think he's shooting his targets wrong, but Brian Valentine involved yet again. And uh, McMahon is just going to ride the apron there. Valentine had, is currently angry at about half of this field. We had an incident under caution. Josh LeMayo, the brake's going to fail, similar to uh, Colin Bartel, he's going to run to him. Only, unlike Colin Bartel, he does not go out of the race. He keeps it going, but uh, he would be on pit road for a hefty amount of time. Oh, and he's going to collect uh, Prince Lil John. I'm not sure if uh, Lil John did something to him um, in the past, but uh, a little bit of aggression on track. Another uh, driver's spot we're going to do, uh, Devin Whitson, currently running in seventh place, a couple laps off the pace. But having a great effort in the number 29 Hayer uh, Chevy. Devin Whitson, a uh, rookie I haven't seen him in any, and many other series. He's here tonight in a one-off entry. Hopefully uh, we'll see him back. Um, caution 26, lap 145. 
Tom Girard is going to uh, try and pass Chris Washer. Going to get a little loose. Gets turned by Makoto Aguchi. They're going to both go into the wall. Uh, Tom Girard uh, gets back out of Mary Way, but uh, that car's got a little more damage. He's pretty far off the lead lap. And as we head to three-fourths of the race, with only uh, 50 laps to go, currently Dom Caps is your leader. William Duncan is 13th on track. Matt Evans is 16th. Brian McMahon in 20th, Jerry Finguy 21st, and Brian Valentine 31st. William Duncan is currently champion unless something happens. We had a caution on lap 150. Jamie Murphy, car number 28, going to get it, make some contact with Austin LaPlante. Gets turned by Joseph Bryant. No harm, no foul, but uh, it's going to call out the caution nonetheless as uh, Alex Tanker also got a little piece of it. We had yet another caution on lap 155. This is the 28th caution of the night. Tyler Young running three wide. Going to get into uh, Makoto Iguchi. And uh, Brian McMahon's going to turn him around. It looks like everyone's going to go through all right. Whoa! Tyler Young's going to get flipped by Bob Cittadino. And a uh, difficult debut for Tyler Young. Continuing onward as he gets that car back going. Caution 29, lap 162. Andrew Robinson going to get shoved into the wall by Cameron Diamond, and that car is going to lay backwards on the on the turn one. As Jamie Murphy makes contact, Andrew Robinson has such a good day to start it; it's going to fall pretty far back. We had some a bit of a conflict under caution here. Julius Piet starts getting into Brian Benoit. Benoit um, retaliates, and they're just bumping going into the turn here. So I wonder what this is about. There's any uh, past conflict between the two throughout this race? A lot of angry people today. We have to spotlight William Duncan, who currently fits in the 12th position. At the current moment, he would be your champion as Brian Valentine has heavily dropped through the uh, standings. Um, William Duncan is looking at that championship unless something were to happen to him. But time is running down, and the longer he stays in the race, the less chance other drivers have. We have a caution coming out. We saw right behind him. Caution 30, lap 169. Joseph Bryan, who sits in the top five, is going to get into uh, Nicky Allen. Like Nicky Allen kind of turned in front of him, tried to block. And both of them are going to go into the inside wall. A couple other cars are going to stack up as well here. As you see Tom Gerard getting in, getting a small piece of it. But no harm, no foul. They all keep going. We spotlight Matt Evans. We mentioned William Duncan is in line for the championship right now. But if something were to happen to William Duncan, he goes out of the race. Matt Evans would be in the spot to win the championship. Evans was close but no cigar last year and was just missed the cut the year before. So Matt Evans really hoping things go his way this year as uh, time is starting to run out for the number four car. We spotlight Tom Gerard right now in car number 82. He's 31st, 26 laps down. Not going to beat the record set by Shelby LeGray in 2011 at this track of 37 laps off the pace, but beats the record from last year's race. Russell Curry only went 23 laps down. So Tom Gerard may not be having a record-setting pace, but is uh, having a record-setting lap down count. Not what Tom Gerard wanted to be remembered for, but maybe he'll be remembered for other things next season if he comes back. Caution 31, lap 181. Bob Sedino has been battling all night to stay in this race. Jeffrey Finn guy is going to get turned by Derek Panassi right up into the 04 machine. Jamie Murphy is going to make contact as well. And Bob Cedino is going to actually pull out of this race. Something's going to go on the number 04 machine. And with that, it makes it physically impossible for Dom Caps and Jeffrey Finguy to win the championship. And you can see right there that Jeffrey Finguy is currently on his roof. We're not sure how that happened. We don't have a camera footage of that. But with only 30 cars running on track, Dom Caps and Jeffrey Finguy are mathematically eliminated from winning this championship. We got spotlight Joseph Bryant as Bryant is in much better condition. He is mathematically locked into the top 35, so he is going to beat Bob Cortez. Congratulations to Joseph Bryant, who's been really working hard all season to lock himself in. Both the NSURA cars are locked into Bristol if they come back next season. Caution 32, lap 193. Trek Targer is going to get shoved into the wall by Matt Evans. I think Evans was trying to cause a caution to wreck uh, William Duncan. Not going to work here. Trek Togger is going to get spun around multiple times. And uh, he's going to get back on course. Trek Togger's had an abysmal season. And this is kind of a uh, spit in his face. Jamie Murphy is not going to have a much better run either. Going to get right into the back of the pace car. Makoto Gucci was happy because Jamie Murphy is the reason Makoto Gucci just wrecked into Trek Togger. Jamie Murphy would go out of the race, but uh, it was late enough where she wouldn't lose too many positions. Now we only have 
three laps to go as John Cap is the only car in the lead lap and is currently leading by a record amount of four laps over second place, which is currently Joseph Bryant has he been able to get by PG London. So Dom Cap just needs to finish these last three laps without getting in any trouble and he can go for a victory. He can't win this championship, but he's going for the win. Lap 199 of 200. Dom Caps has been known all season long as being Mr. Consistency. He's been getting straight top fives and top tens with maybe the occasional hiccup. He's always been up there. He's not going to win this championship, unfortunately, but he's closing in on getting his first victory. White flag in the air, the final lap of the 2013 Uticom Track Series season. Dom Caps is all by himself. There's no one that can challenge him. There's no way he can lose this race. He just has to keep it cool in these last two turns. Dom Caps coming to the line. The DuPont Chevy, the number 24 car. Dom Caps going to cross the line, and he's going to win his first career Utica Home Track Series race here at Myrtle Beach. Congratulations to the Caps Racing Team. They've endured a lot of hardships with uh, Nick Caps and Dustin Caps having issues. Dom Caps put off a good effort for the championship. Not going to get it, but it's going to get him their first victory today. And we are going to take a look at the race results before we crown our champion. Here are your race results for today's event. Dom Capps was your race winner. He was the rookie of the race and he led the most laps. He's also going to get the record for largest margin of victory. He won by four laps, which beats Megan Curley, who I believe won by only two. Joseph Bryan finishes in second and is going to definitely lock himself into the top 35. Pichu London, amazing run in third. Judith Piet, amazing run in fourth. Andrew Robinson, despite some troubles later on, rounds out the top five. Devin Whitson, Makoto Iguchi, both making their debut, getting solid finishes. Connor Germain, a great run. Julian Kennebleth Jr. in ninth. Bruins Lil John rounds out the top ten. The top 12 cars are all rookies, which is the first time this has happened. That's another record. That's William Duncan was 11th. Cameron Diamond 12th. Matt Evans finishes 13th. Murphy was out of the race but finished 14th because of how late she went out. McMahon is in 15th, followed by Sam Young, Chris Washer in the backup car, Jeffrey Finguy, Austin LaPlante, a decent first showing, and Brian Benoit running out your top 20. Derek Benassi within his first start. The pole sitter, Nicky Allen, not going to get a good run today. Trek Togger struggled throughout most of the event. Justin Benoit in 24th. Tyler Young had an awful race, going to finish 25th. Josh LaMeo was doing so good early on, but ended up in 26th place due to that pace car contact. Andreas Allen, despite the bad finish, was a real trooper today, kept it going. Brian Valentine, disappointing 28th. He was the favorite going in. Tom Gerard finished the 29th, the last car to finish the race. Bob Cedino, Alex Tanker, Colin Bartel, Nicholas Guerra, Spencer Germer, Amanda Pericles, Inga Lombliana, and Jonathan Ben all are not going to finish this race. It is a shame for them. But uh, they all put in a good effort to work their way into this race. They at least will be going with something. Now is time. And your champion is... Yes, William Duncan is our champion for the 2013 Utica Home Track Series season. He was the Watkins Glen winner, and he was able to beat the odds and be your champion. Despite being a relative unknown last season, Brian Valentine, a disappointing runner-up, close but no cigar. Dom Capps, an impressive run, is going to get him to third place in points, beating Matt Evans in fourth. Brock McMahon is going to finish fifth. Julian Kennebliffe Jr. is going to be his teammate Jeffrey Finguy for sixth. Finn Guy dropped to 7th. Bob Cidino sits in 8th place. Nicholas Guerra is in ninth and rounding out the top 10 with Tyler Benoit, who actually failed to qualify for this race, so impressive effort by him. Megan Curley sits in 11th, the Martinsville winner. Brandon Bain is in 12th, followed by Dustin Capps. Russell Arcuri, Maria Camiso, the Rockingham winner. David Yonke, who won at Sonoma. Jamie Murphy, who was hoping for a better season than she had. Looked like she was going to be a contender at the beginning of the year. Harris Shock in 18th. The two-time winner. Zachary Robinson in 19th, riding out that top 20. is Colin Bartell, the Megville winner, who had a disappointing end to the season. John Sedino was in 21st, despite missing a couple races. Trek Togger in 22nd. Ray Takuda, the two-time winner. 
Alex DeMarco in 24th, followed by Andreas Allen, the Daytona winner, Andrew Robinson, the Silverstone winner, and Neil Evans, the most poor winner. Then we had Samantha Yankee, who had a disappointing year. Michelle Sadino, an equally disappointing year. Seth Cole, rounding out your top 30, hoping for better next year, maybe. Justin Benoit, 31st, uh, despite a rocky start. Joseph Bryan is going to make himself in and beat a couple positions. Dylan Young, Alex Tanker, Chris Aurelio, round out your top 35. They'll all be locked into the Bristol race next season, sh should they attempt it. Now let's take a look at the point standings from 30th, 6th, through 70th. Now we've had a total of 97 drivers make a race this season, so impressive total. These are the drivers who just didn't make the cut. Bob Cortez gets knocked out just barely, but he was retiring anyway, so it would not matter too greatly. Joshua Michaels in 37th, who had a rough season. Jerry Guerra, who was looking like he was going to make the top 35 until the very end. Kevin Ulrich, who went out at half season. Willie Decker. Connor Germain, the French driver who made who made a lot of uh, good runs. Jeff Evans, who went out half season. Matt Duell, the self-made man. Vladimir Petrov, the Russian Rocket in 44th. Billy Bishop went out at the halfway point. Thomas Beatty had a decent run later in the season. Okuyama Dea, one of the best for the Gas Tech team. Gustavus Cortez, who had a rough year along with Michael Aurelio. There's Austin Ogo, who went out midseason. Joey Beatty only ran two races, but did very well in both of them. Then there was Connor Atwood. The uh, teammate car to William Duncan, Brian Brote, Brian Benoit, Nick Capps, who had a rough season, except for a couple uh, starts, Brendan Patterson, Josh Lameo, Nikki Allen, Adam Dunlap, Sam Young, rounding out your top 60. Then there was Caitlin Stringer, the number 90, the teammate car to Matt Duell. Prunes Little John was able to uh, pull off a couple of good starts. Joseph Vanesto had a couple of runs this season. He's maybe going to try for the full effort next year. Cameron Diamond in the number 69S coming in late in the season. Dion Scott, Brenda Pericles, and Nick Pericles almost getting the same amount of points. Michael Creed sits 68th. Judas Piet was 69th. Rounding out your top 70 with Rose Tyler. And now we're going to go to the last bit of the point setting. 71st through 97th. These were drivers that mostly were one-off entries or just really did not have the luck this season. Could not make it through those qualifier events and just couldn't finish the year, or drivers that just had to pull out of the season. Pichu London was the highest placing of the debut drivers at Myrtle Beach, so good job for him, 71st in points. Zach Saturday had a one-race effort at Daytona that uh, really went well for him. Sean Angel, the Canadian, had a good effort at uh, Monza, I believe it was. Devin Whitson, Makoto Iguchi, both uh, making their debut in this race. Inman J and Dylan Ogo. Both of them having a limited schedule. Sudbury Moore, the uh, English driver, the only uh, regional entry to make it in a race. Jake Smith, Alex Allen, both going out early in the year. Chris Washer, Austin LaPlante, and Derek Panathi, who all made their debut at Myrtle Beach. Ray Davis, who uh, Captain Clutch from the Youth Rally Cross Series, made one start this year. Jonathan Benton was able to come in at the very end. Robert Piat, only one start, but we expect great things from him in the future. Robert DeFranco only made one start early on. Tyler Young, Tom Gerard making their debuts this race. Shelby LeGray ran the Darlington event. Spencer Germer, Amanda Pericles, Inga Lombliana all struggled in the Myrtle Beach event, didn't finish. Joe Martin made a start at Zandvoort. Jack Darby made a start at Indianapolis. Dylan White made a start at Bristol. And Chris Kyle made a start at Rockingham. He finishes dead last in the standings. That was your 2013 final points results. Now let's just look at the top 10 Rookie of the Year standing, and this is surprising. You would think William Duncan would have won the championship in both, but Dom Capps actually accrued more Rookie of the Year points than William Duncan. So William Duncan's going to finish runner-up to him, so at least Dom Capps gets something this year. Julian Kennebles Jr. was in third, followed by Arashak, Nicholas Guerra, Dustin Capps, Ray Takeda, Zachary Robinson, Alex DeMarco, Colin Bartel rounding out the top 10 in these standings. That's all that really matters here. The others were pretty far behind and did not back into the Rookie of the Year running. Well, I feel that this 2013 season was a very good season. Uh, I want to thank everyone who uh, supported by joining the series, especially those who had joined mid-season, because it, it, it really gave me the impression that people liked this enough that they would want to join even while the season's going on to actually inquire about that. This series was made possible because of you guys. I never thought when I was just an elementary school student this was just a small little die-cast car league I did for fun and just for my own personal recreation that this would become something that people would be watching and
commenting on and liking, and it really means a lot to me. Um, Utica Home Track Series is over for 2013. We're going to get started back in 2014. That's when we're going to have our debut event, so it will probably be January. Sign-ups will probably be in late November or uh, December. We'll have to plan all those dates out. Um, it all depends on when, how busy I am and if I get Utica Rally Cross Series and the NASCAR Road Racing Challenge Cup done. Thank you for watching the 2013 season, and uh, have a pleasant day.